Welcome everybody. Hi, I'm Steve Farrell. I'm a co-founder of Humanities Team. I'm coming to you live from our studio here in Boulder, Colorado. And as you can see, I have on screen with me uh, Serena dyer Pasoni. I'm going to give her a proper introduction in a moment, but uh, Serena, hey, great. Uh, thank Hi. you for being with me this morning. I'm happy to be here. I'm excited. All right. And uh, Serena's coming in from her home in South Florida. I'm coming in uh, live from Boulder, Colorado. So big shout out to Serena's uh, friends, the Dyer family's friends, Humanity Stream members that are here in the green room with us, Humanity's team members, uh, the Sign Network and John Raymer were broadcasting out across uh, that whole uh, set of, uh, of, of Facebook pages. So, uh, hey, welcome all of you. Thanks for being with us. It's a live program. So, as always, when we do these programs, since it's live, we can take questions during the hour. So, as we get going, uh, I'm gonna, I think we're gonna arouse some curiosity uh, and feel free to just throw your questions in the chat. Those questions are brought back to me here in the studio and I can bring them to Serena here during the hour. Okay, so our theme here today is carrying forward Wayne Dyer's and her own legacy. And uh, let me introduce Serena here. Serena Dyer Pisoni, she is the sixth of Wayne and Marceline Dyer's eight children. She is the author of Don't Die With Your Music Still In You, My Experience Growing Up With Spiritual Parents, and she's the co-author of the book, The Knowing, 11 Lessons to Understand the Quiet Urges of Your Soul with her sister Sage, and has been a contributor to the Huff Post and Positively Positive. She also works to combat child trafficking through several organizations. Serena attended the University of Miami, where she received a bachelor's and master's degree and now lives in South Florida with her husband and children. Serena is a powerful voice in the conscious living movement and serves to carry Dr. Wayne Dyer's and her own vital messages uh, from life and, in, and death into the world. Today, we're gonna to be discussing carrying forward these legacies. You will also get an inside look into a powerful video training that Serena and her sister Sage created in collaboration with re renowned spiritual medium, Karen Noe, it's called Messages from the Afterlife that dives even deeper into the truth of eternal life. Uh, and we're broadcasting that uh, just for the second time as a live campaign next Wednesday at this very same time, 9 a.m. Pacific. And then we're doing an encore uh, the following Saturday, the 13th at 9 a.m. Pacific. So we'll talk a little bit about that. If you register for those programs, you'll get to see that uh, those live broadcasts. So, so again, Serena, great to have you with us. Uh, boy, we, uh, we missed you. We uh, were with you a little while back and time passes and I know your family's growing up fast, huh? Yeah, my kids are, I can't believe it. They're all in school full time now. It's like, I don't know what to do with myself during the day. So <laughs> time is definitely flying. So when we were in the green room, we were just talking a little bit. Uh, and of course we're gonna be getting into uh, for people that aren't familiar with this whole story of this video training, it's called Messages from the Afterlife. And then there's a master class that follows called Life After Death. For those that aren't familiar with the story, it's, it's unbelievable, truly jaw-dropping, uh, because it's about Wayne Dyer. Um, this is where the story begins anyway. He passed uh, or transitioned in 2015. But then all of these things have uh, gone on, messages that he's bringing to the world up, uh, right up until uh, this very moment. So we're gonna talk about that, but uh, Serena, yeah, just, you know, your family uh, in the afterlife, you have a sister and, uh, and your dad. Um, so do you wanna share? You were sharing something really totally remarkable with me here just a moment ago and kind of tell, tell us what happened. Sure. So Steve and I have worked together over the last year, um, maybe even two years on putting together this program. And so he's familiar with a lot of the different um, signs and crazy synchronicities and um, messages that we've received from our dad and my stepson and now my sister, Summer, who passed away um, in May of last year. So we're coming up to the one year anniversary of her passing away. And um, so he has heard, you know, many times now in our conversations, he's heard all the different sort of signs and cool stories that we've shared um, before. And so he asked me if I had anything recently that has happened or anything new that I hadn't told him about before. And um, and so I told him how about a week ago, 
my husband was on the beach in Fort Lauderdale, which is where we live. And he found a message in a bottle and he didn't open it. He brought it home so that um, he and myself and our three children could open it together because he knew it'd be really exciting, you know, for the kids, especially. And um, when he, when we got the bottle open, we had to break the bottle When we got the bottle open. um, The first thing I noticed was that it was written in this purple ink. And so that just immediately spoke to me because my dad, um, maybe the last five years of his life, he only wrote in purple ink. And in fact, he would regularly send my siblings and myself packages of purple ink pens and purple ink Sharpies. So he would sign books, you know, the last five years of his life, he got really into the color purple. He loved it. And so immediately the purple ink spoke to me. But as soon as the letter was out of the bottle, I said to my husband, do you want me to read it? Can I read it? Do you want me to read it? Hey, why don't I read it? Can I read it? And it was because I felt like this letter was for me before I even knew what it said, before I knew who it was addressed to. I just felt so strongly out of the blue that this letter was for me. And I was right because the letter begins to my little sister. I always knew you were going to be here with me. I wish you still were because I miss you all the time. I just wanted to let you know that I've been in a dark place for a long time now. I'm finally coming out of it and I'm ready to talk to you. And the letter then goes on and on with some specific things for who the, who this was written for. And unfortunately, the letter is not signed or dated. So I don't know. I have no way of contacting the person who wrote it. Um, on the second page of the letter, she mentions a quote from Forrest Gump. And to me, that was sort of a confirmation that even though this message was indeed written for somebody else, I think my sister had a hand from the other side in getting it to me. I think it was also meant for me because on the second page of the letter, she mentions the movie Forrest Gump and my son's name is Forrest. And he was named after the movie Forrest Gump, which is my favorite movie and my sister Summer's favorite movie of all time as well. So even though it would be easy to sort of dismiss this and say, oh, well, you found a message in a bottle. Cool. Yeah. It mentions my little sister. Cool. It mentions Forrest Gump. Great. It's a popular movie. A lot of people love it. It has purple ink. Okay, cool. I choose to see it as though it was, it was just my sister's way of saying hi to me. And I could choose to see it as though it was not, and that it was just a coincidence that it mentioned these things and included these things in the letter, but I just don't see it that way. I see it as though this was a gift from her as we are now within three weeks of the one year anniversary of her passing. She passed on May 22nd last year. She drowned in Costa Rica. And um, and so I see it as though this message somehow got to my husband's hands and I just knew it was for me. And it felt really kind of cool and and touching and just beautiful, the, the connection to it all. Oh, thank you for sharing, gosh, such a personal story. And of course, uh, boy, sympathies, um, you know, your, your sister passing just a year ago. And um, as you know, I have a sister that was next in line after me, a uh, large family also that passed many years ago. So yeah, sympathies on that. Um, I just want to share, you know, how valuable it is that you, that you open yourself and receive these messages because as we were discussing this earlier, you know, the, the problem here is, is so often these things happen where it's unmistakable. I mean, you know, come on, Forrest, and your son's name is Forrest, and, and little sister, and your sister that passed was your older sister. There just are too many intersections here, you know, of truth to dismiss it. And yet so many do. I, I think I told you my, my wife had a, a similar kind of thing happen where she never hears any music at night when she's streaming, and yet there was this Carpenter song that just came on full blast and looking down on you from the world and this beautiful thing of just this loving relationship. And her mom had just passed. And wow. uh, she was quite, you know, quite, uh, she was still really adjusting to that very big loss because her mom was her, was her soul sister. Uh, these things, if where we open ourselves and receive them, then from the other side, they just keep happening and coming through and they want to be, have a relationship and guide and support. And of course, your dad, uh, this is what we're going to get to next, talking about doing it in an extreme way, even bringing a whole book through 
for today's world. I mean, just astonishing. It's the most jaw-dropping thing that I've ever heard of uh, from these afterlife experiences. So we'll uh, segue to that, but uh, congratulations on getting that note. I'm sure that, uh, boy, that must have sat really beautifully and still does with you. Yeah, I definitely, um, I definitely felt in that moment such a, a an awareness or a knowing of, you know, our loved ones really are still here and they really are working to get us the signs and the messages that we're asking for. And even though I would have liked if the note said to Serena and I would have liked if it was delivered to my front door and I would have liked if it said my sister's name Summer in it, um, you know, I, I still choose to see it all as though it was a gift and I try to not become too caught up in the type of packaging it's delivered in. Yeah, which is perfect. And that's why it's such an important story to share. Because again, what I hear so many times are people dismissing these things. And of course, this is, this is the moment where we're shifting, right? The big pivot is happening right now. Your dad talked about that when he was alive. He's talking about it now uh, from the afterlife that we're now shifting into the, what we're calling conscious living, or you could call it oneness or unity consciousness. There are many different things we could call it, but the big shift of the ages is happening right now. And part of that is, the lifting of the veil and just getting rid of these notions that somebody just dies and goes to dust and you know there's one lifetime it just isn't true there's there's way too much evidence from uh mediums from the near-death experiences uh, these uh, examples of the life experience that uh, we we go through after we transition there's just way too much evidence now to believe any longer in death it's just no no such thing so uh and that's why this program is so important. This lifting of the veil that, you, that happens here in Messages from the Afterlife and then the other program, Life After Death, with you, your sister Sage and Karen Noe, uh, is again, um, you, you, Serena, may know of a more extraordinary example of reaching through from the afterlife. I don't. And, and we work with mediums and indie ears all day, every day. You know, and I don't know of a more extraordinary uh, experience than what has happened in, in your own family? I mean, for me, I don't know if I could really think of a more extraordinary example either because simply, and we've talked about this in the program, but I'll just go ahead and share it here anyway, simply because of the fact that um, our first, Karen Noe, who we, we, we did this program with, is a very gifted psychic medium. <clears throat> and um, how we came to even meet her was sort of a cool um uh, uh, just a really kind of like cool and crazy uh, series of events that kind of led us to her. And uh, the first time we sat down, my mom, my sister, Sky, my sister, Sage, and myself, the first time we sat down with her, which was in October of 2015, it was two months after my dad had passed. Um, the first time we met with her in person, she said to me, congratulations. Uh, your dad is saying that you're pregnant. Congratulations. And I, no, first, sorry, let me just back up. First, she said to me, Serena, your dad is talking about the 4th of July, fireworks 4th of July. And I said, well, you know, we would always be together in, on Maui. We would watch the fireworks on the 4th of July. Um, but like, I don't know, it's, there's nothing really specific for me about the 4th of July. So I kind of felt like I was reaching to like find a meaning to her saying that. And um, she said, no, 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 your dad is saying 4th of July fireworks. He's also saying that you're pregnant. And he wants to say congratulations. And I had a six month old daughter at this time. And my dad had met my daughter. Um, he had met her before he passed away. He had passed away two months prior. And I thought, you know, my dad knows that I have a baby. I'm not pregnant. I just had a baby. And he wouldn't confuse my daughter, Sailor, who he's met with um a pregnancy you know he would know the difference and she said no 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 he's very very clear you're pregnant he's saying you're pregnant fourth of july fireworks and my mom and my sisters were looking at me like are you pregnant did you not tell us and i said no i'm not <laughs> pregnant i don't even think you know in the last two months since dad died i haven't been really feeling romantic let's just say so i don't even think there was a time where i could have even gotten pregnant and they were just like well let's take a pregnancy test because every thing else that Karen had said in that meeting was so on point, so specific, so accurate, and so personal things that if somebody did a Google search on my father, they would not have found some of these things out. And um, 
And so when we left there, I said, I definitely want to take a pregnancy test now because I'm really curious if I'm actually pregnant. And we got back to the hotel, bought a pregnancy test. I took it and I was pregnant. And when I got back to Florida, I went right to my OBGYN. I said, I have no idea how far along I am. And they said, you know, well, we can do a measurement that will, um, it's the most accurate measurement in the very beginning. And we can do this measurement and give you your due date and tell you how far along you are. So, you know, they put the measurement into the software on the computer that gives you the due date and how far along you are. And my due date was the 4th of July. And yeah, my I mean, daughter, Windsor Wayne, yes, poor girl got Wayne as her, as a middle name. She was born on July 1st. And while I was in labor with her, while I was in the hospital, actively pushing, Sage, my sister, was with me. And Sage said, Sage's phone started to ring. And the reason we even knew is because Sage was holding her phone to try and take pictures as soon as the baby was out. The phone starts to ring. She looks at it. She looks at me and she says, Karen Noe is calling. Should I answer it? And that's the psychic that told me I was pregnant. And I said, answer it, answer it. <laughs> and, and I didn't tell anybody. I didn't put it on social media. There's no way Karen lives in New Jersey. I live in Florida. I didn't announce that I was in labor. Um, and in that moment, Karen called Sage, put her on speaker. And Karen said, uh, Sage, your dad is here. He's with me. And he was really, really adamant that I needed to call you right away. And uh, this message is for Serena. Are you with Serena right now? And Sage said, yeah, I'm with Serena. And she said, OK, he was very clear. He told me not to call Serena, but to call you. Is Serena OK? And Sage goes, yeah, no, she's she's OK. And I was like, hi, Karen, in between pushes. And Karen said, are you in labor? And I said, yes, like I'm having a baby any minute. And she said, your dad wanted me to let you know he was right there with you. And he's so it's going to make me cry. He's so proud of you. And I said, you know, make sure he's standing back by my head because I don't know. Does he have can he see? I don't know what kind of things he can see. I don't want my dad in the delivery room. But, you know, I was making a joke about it. But um, to me, it was like I found out I was pregnant from my dad who had passed away. And in the moment I was in labor, he managed to get a message to me, letting me know that he was with me and that he was proud of me and that he was thinking of me. And I just um, to me, that's just such a crazy example. And there's others like that. There's others like that. In the book, Sage and I wrote The Knowing. There's other examples like that in the program that we did with Steve, um, with Humanities, with Karen Noe. Um, I say we because it was my sister, Sage, and I that wrote the book and did the program together. And there's many, many examples like that. And so um, I will say that I don't think that these examples are because my dad was Wayne Dyer or because I'm special or because... Um, this is only available to his family because he was a spiritual teacher in this lifetime. I think that this type of message and connection and communication is available to everybody. And I think that the reason that my siblings and I receive this so often and in such profound ways is because we were never raised to not expect it. We were never raised to believe in anything other than um the soul goes on and the soul continues. And so there was never any doubt, at least not for me. Um, as Steve knows, I don't know if I can go into another story or if I should wait for a second. Yeah, wait for a second, because let's bring in another story. But so, th so that is extraordinary. You can see why I'm saying, uh, you know, there, there, we, we again work with, we're, we're, we're blessed to work with unbelievable mediums, Karen Nowy, uh, Suzanne Giesman, uh, James von Prague, and among others uh, that are extraordinary. And then also Indy Ears uh, that uh, have just extraordinary uh, near-death experiences, but, but never something like this, my God, where, <laughs> where your dad is coming in from the afterlife to tell you you're pregnant, when you're, gonna, when you're scheduled to have your baby, and then to call in to the delivery room as you're having your baby. It's like your dad is still here, you know? Which, which is the whole point, that he is still here. Um, and I, and I, I, 
I don't know, but I'm going to just speculate something here, uh, that this was not a random thing that this happened in your family. As you mentioned, you don't consider yourself special. Um, this, is, this is an extraordinary time in the history of humankind's evolution on the earth. I think most of us who are conscious would agree to that. There's a pivot going on. And part of this pivot is really understanding that our oneness, uh, that everything is one in the cosmos from, from proton atom level to cosmological objects, everything physical and non-physical in between, and that it's an, we have all the properties of, you could call it God, the divine uh, universe, uh, but those properties include everlasting life. There is no such thing as death. So we are putting to bed these notions of death because we live our lives in a whole different way uh, and this is Serena and Sage share this so beautifully, where, where you have proof, where you know beyond the shadow of a doubt, you know, that her dad lives on, that we live on, uh, we, we just live our life in a whole different way. And, and we can create, make these changes, create this shift into where we start living, not uh, just for uh, power, fame, and fortune, but for other things, for life, for family, for love, you know, et cetera, for for these young uh, women that you're helping uh, as, as one of the things that you're devoted to, Serena. So um, now this, this program, again, is called Messages from the Afterlife. Maybe we can get a link up on the screen. Uh, if you register for it, we're going to broadcast it live in, during our Wednesday program next week. So 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 noon Eastern, uh, join us. And then we're going to do an encore of it on the following Saturday, the 13th at 9 a.m. Pacific. Uh, so. So be sure to uh, sign up for that free program if you haven't seen it. It's only the second time we're bringing them in and doing a live launch with this. So uh, very excited about that. Um, so I know you had another story. And, and also, I don't think the, the first video clip is not that, that one. Yeah. So uh, there was a clip that we had from the, um, the, the video, the free video training that talked about you, you were you know, you, you share so openly and so honestly, Serena, you were sharing how you were brought up in a home, you know, with your dad and mom where uh, there are no victims or villains. And, and you were talking about how things were happening and how you uh, could put a perspective on that that was really beautiful, you know, in terms of we can draw challenges into our life and that helps us to grow. It was kind of the story that you were sharing. You, you probably remember that clip. Are you going to play it now? Uh, we, we were actually, rarely do we have a, uh, a video uh, glitch. We have a second one we're going to play in a little bit, but that one uh, can't play right now. So you could, you could just share anything that you want to share about that. Yeah, I think, um, I think that the, because the program we did is really long. It's several hours. So I think that the part that you're talking about um, was when I was talking about after um, my stepson passed away. And, but I'm not exactly sure, but I can just jump into that anyway. Um, there was a period of time in my life where my dad had just passed away. I was, I had a six month old baby at home. I had, a, was pregnant again. My husband's business was shut down. All of his finances, our finances were frozen. He was indicted um, for criminal charges in a, in a business related sense. And, um, and it was a, it just became such a dark time in my life. And in fact, I would still say it was the hardest period of time I've ever experienced. It was just one thing after the other, after the other. And, um, and even though I was raised with really spiritual parents and I was raised, um, with this idea that you need to take sort of responsibility for everything that happens in your life. Um, meaning, the moment you take responsibility for the good and the bad that shows up in your life, you're essentially reclaiming your power. You're deciding for yourself that even though there are things that happen in life that are outside of my control and I cannot change those things, I do not have the ability or the power to change those things. I do have one ultimate freedom and that freedom is in how I choose to respond in who I become as a result of what I'm experiencing or what I've experienced. And so um, in the midst of all of that just so many, so many, so many difficulties. Um, my husband 
his son, my stepson, who was 19 years old at the time, he um, unfortunately passed away from an accidental drug overdose. And so it was like, you know, my dad died and then my stepson died and then my husband was on trial. And now I have these two baby girls and I'm facing, you know, raising them as a single mother if my husband isn't going to be able to be around, if he has to go to prison or something. So it was like this really insane period of time in my life. And there were many times where despite having really spiritual parents, I still, um, I still would have these moments often during that challenging time of like, why is this happening to me? Or um, if, you know, my dad used to say that before you're ever even born, before you incarnate into this lifetime, you have a conversation with God and you say to God, you know, in this lifetime, I would like to learn X, Y, and Z. And God says, okay, we're going to give you these opportunities for your soul to come here and grow in this way. And most of the time, growth does not happen without being challenged. And so even though there was this part of me that felt like I needed to take responsibility for where I was at in life and that I needed to take um, ownership of where I was at in order to change it, I still at times felt like a victim of my circumstances. And so spiritual parenting or not, it took me a while to get to this place where I was finally able to say, instead of why me, why is this happening to me? Um, I must be bad because I've attracted bad things into my life. I started to shift it and I was able to ask myself, what is this here to teach me? Why did I sign up to experience this? In what way am I supposed to grow from this? And if I can get the lesson, can I help others with this as well? And um, it was a really pivotal shift to go from why me to how, how am I choosing to respond to what is happening to me? And in, in realizing that I was choosing to respond as a victim and I was choosing to respond as poor me, I was sort of perpetuating that. I was creating more of it. The moment I started to change that and ask myself, what is this here to teach me? It was like I could finally feel moments of gratitude for all of the difficult things because I realized, wow, I've learned so much and I've learned so much about, about what I'm capable of and who I can be and how much more compassionate I am now for other people that are going through a really difficult time or a loss of a, a child or a stepson. I mean, it was like, I was able to change because as my dad always said, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. And I started to change the way I was looking at everything that was happening in my life. And as a result of that, I found that I was suddenly much more capable, much kinder, much more beautiful on the inside toward others. And I was able to become just a better human being across the board as a result of what I must have signed up to experience in this lifetime, which was a lot of hard stuff in a really short period of time. Boy, let me just say, um, you know, you, you share so raw and so real, Serena. Um, I mean, it's really beautiful. These are things, you know, people wouldn't want to take these things and hide them, right? And yet we all experience these things. I, I myself, I have a son I, I've talked about on the air. Um, we, my wife and I adopted two children at birth and our, our oldest just turned 21, just this past Sunday, uh, his name is Dylan. And he has an extreme separation anxiety, which really uh, we can't, Stephanie and I can't travel together uh, because of this. There's some real issues around us leaving the home. Um, he has something called pyroluria, and uh, that's what causes it where you, you know, male or female, you urinate out like your B6, your zinc, your magnesium, your vitamin C, you urinate all those things out. And these supplements and vitamins within our system are what create the walls uh, that contain anxiety. So, and when you, wow. in your body, it chemi gets so chemically imbalanced because you don't have any of it, it's like throwing, the doctors say, it's like throwing a match into a vacuum that's full of gasoline. It just explodes, which is any little anxiety thing becomes uh, alarming and overwhelming. So 
he's, he's uh, uh, working to recover from that. And the doctor said in the 17 years that they've run the clinic, they've never seen anybody that had this worse than Dylan. So it's, it's well, a real, so sorry, you know, real, um, and it's hard, you know, cause he says, dad, why do I, you know, why, why do I have this? Um, how can I ever get rid of it? And you're, you know, what you, what you modeled, what your, what, what your example is, it's the way through, you know, where you own it and you look for as hard as it is to, to look for what is the gift here, you know? And then it, it's funny because one of the things you shared and I share with Dylan quite frequently is this clinic uh, based out of Chicago says that 30% of the global population actually has some form of this chemical imbalance, almost never as bad as Dylan's, but, but 30% of the global population is chemically imbalanced and it causes you know, emotional disturbance and things. And I said, Dylan, you know, as you get through this, you can be the face and the hope and the possibility for all these people all over the world where you can say, I was the worst the clinic ever saw. And if I can do it, you can do it, you know? So keep pushing through, Dylan, because uh, look at what you can do for others out there in the world. Uh, so yeah, anyway, I think that's, thank you again yeah, I'm, for, I'm sorry to hear that Dylan is going through that, but I, I think that your message and you being his father will absolutely help him to, um, to allow this to transform him into who he is meant to become rather than reduce him into just the set of circumstances that he has no control over to begin with. And, and I can say that one thing that I kept doing in the midst of all of my difficult time, and I was having a lot of depression and a lot of fear and a lot of anxiety. Um, one of the things that I kept doing was I kept saying, okay, when the trial is over, then I'll be at peace. And when I lose this baby weight from having two babies back to back, then I'll feel good about myself. And when we get um, you know, more money, then I'll be a, a calmer person and I'll be more at ease and I'll probably be a better mom. And everything was like, when, 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 when I have these circumstances in my life under control, then I can be at peace. And the craziest part about that is that I was raised, truly raised from birth on the exact opposite. I was raised on the, the knowing that when I have peace inside of myself, the circumstances of my life will fall into place and that the circumstances in my life will not fall into place if I am internally in a state of turmoil, of war, of, of fear, of anxiety. It's like, um, you know, my dad used to always quote this, this poem from Moby Dick and I didn't really get it. I didn't really get it because a, you know, I was a lot younger when he was, when I would go to his talks and hear him say these things and B, Moby Dick is a hard book to read. Um, but one of the, my favorite poems that he used to always say was for as this appalling ocean surrounds the verdant land. So in the soul of man lies one insular Tahiti full of peace and joy but surrounded by all the horrors of a half-lived life. And what that really is saying is that inside everyone, every man and woman is an insular Tahiti. For me, it was Maui. For me, my insular place of peace is, is Maui. And I kept thinking that I will be better, happier, healthier, kinder, more loving, in a better place once I'm finally back on Maui, because that means that we have money again to fly there and my husband's trial is over and I'm probably going to be in a bathing suit, which means I worked on losing the things that I was, you know, stressed about on my body. And so I had this idea that, um, you know, once I'm on Maui, then I'll be at peace because everything will be okay. And really what that, that poem from Moby Dick says so beautifully is that you already have your Maui in you. You already have that insular Tahiti full of peace and joy, and you can go to that island within yourself. Yeah, boy, that is and so, when, what a beautiful and, story. Yeah, um, and when you do, and, when you do go to that island within yourself, then you have all of the pieces fall into place. And so yeah. for your son, I think, you know, it's especially when you're so young, like 21 is so young, but I think it's such a good reminder of like, there's only one thing that you can control and that is whether or not you are going to your inner Tahiti and coming right. from that place, that safe, loving, God-filled place. 
Absolutely. Boy, another, what a powerful story. Um, and, and this is really the huge one for all of us, even with whatever's going on in any of our lives, uh, that what you're calling inner Tahiti, it's actually here now for every single one of us. Um, you know, whatever, so yours is Maui and money to fly there and whatever, et cetera. We all have our different vision of what that might be, but it is all here right now. This is part of what this conscious living thing is where we're really in this eternal moment of now living in this, in the present moment of presence, which is the one which we could, we use the God word and divine in humanities team where all of that omnipresence, omniscience, omnipotence, it's all here right now. Wayne, Wayne, Talked about that before his passing. He's talking about it after his passing. Uh, one of his huge messages uh, at, in the afterlife right, was that we are all one, right? That was came through in these 33 teachings from Karen Noe, who we've been talking about. Right, Serena? This was a big one in the afterlife that he brought through of, oh my God, there's another big one here. This whole everything yeah. is one. Right. It, it's this idea, you know, we always have this belief that we're separate from everyone, that we're separate from what we desire. We're separate from it, which is why we don't have it, right? That's why we desire it. We're separate from God. We're separate from the people that we don't like, thank God. You know, we always have this thing of like, we're all separate. And um, and he's really made it very clear that, no, we are all, we are all God. And I don't mean that to say like a blasphemous way toward God in any way. I mean that we all come from source, we all return to source, that we all are pieces of God and that God is within every single one of us and that we are all connected in that way, in that space, that there is there is just a, a oneness to it all. And even though sometimes for me, like, I don't like that idea because I don't want to be one with certain people and, you know, no, I'm just kidding. But, you know, even though that's a difficult sort of abstract concept to really understand i think that it is it, i think that it is very true at the same time that um god is within every single one of us and we are all part of god and that is our universal oneness and the more we can see the unfolding of god in everyone including ourselves the more we live from a god realized miraculous um sort of place you know that's when that's when life really becomes incredible when we live from that place of knowing that um we are connected to to all that all that is in existence to all that we desire to all that we love and we're connected to god and god is within us and so i i just i sometimes feel like that's kind of a an abstract concept that's a little mind boggling but at the same time it's really comforting yeah, no kidding, and empowering, like hugely empowering. Yeah, because you, mm -hmm. I mean, you can stand up tall, right? I mean, that seriously, where we know that God is indwelling all of, all of, you know, this whole roomy thing is true, that we're not just a drop in the ocean. The ocean is a drop in you, <laughs> you know, that the right. fullness of God is in you. Um, it's, it's huge. And of course, this is a central, you know, a key teaching in this whole conscious living thing. Because where we really get that, where we understand that, and then more importantly, live into it, where we really live from the place of that knowing, uh, it, it just completely changes everything. It changes the world that we see. It changes our priorities. It changes how we live on the planet. Um, and this is the work of humanity's team. And your family, of course, is a great, great contributor uh, to this work. So, um, hey, let's go now. You've, there's another clip we're going to bring in. So I mentioned, so Messages from the Afterlife is the free 60-minute program we're broadcasting twice next week. And then uh, there's a program called Life After Death. It's a masterclass with 55 video trainings. I think, I don't know that we've ever created a masterclass with 55 video trainings before. Uh, this is Serena Dyer, Sage Dyer, Karen Noe uh, created this with Humanities team. So we're now going to go to a clip that came out of this uh, Life After Death Masterclass, and then uh, Serena and I'll come back and talk about it. Also, we've got uh, some questions coming in, and we'll get to those here as well. So here we go. So as I laid there and I was just overcome with emotion, I said, you know what? If everything you taught is true, if everything that you said about um, 
us being spiritual beings and having this human experience and that the soul lives on and that, um, you know, he would talk about how he could feel the presence of his parents all the time, his parents that had passed away. And I said, if everything that you said is true, then I'm going to need a sign, like a real sign. And um, I just laid there and I was really expecting like light bulbs to explode or like lights to flicker or um, I don't know, doors to start opening and closing and none of that was happening. And nothing was really like occurring that was like a sign. Nothing was happening at all. And I was sort of starting to have this panicked feeling of like, why are you not doing anything? And then all of a sudden I had this um, like voice and I, I don't want to say that like I heard it because I didn't. It was like as if my own mind, my own thought said inside of my own head, um, listen to his podcast, listen to dad's podcast, which was something that I had never thought or done before. I had never once listened to his podcast before. Keep in mind, this is 2015. It's not like podcasts were as popular as they are now. But anyway, I had never done that. But I had this feeling that I needed to do that. So I opened the app on my phone that is automatically downloaded on your iPhone. I didn't even download it. And um, the app called Podcast. And I typed in Wayne Dyer and I clicked play on the first one that came up. And I listened to it and it was about 15 minutes and it was really um, bittersweet in a way because I kept you know, hearing his voice and hearing him give advice to the person that had called into his podcast. And I remember thinking, um, I'm never going to hear his voice. I'm never going to call him on the phone. I'm never going to hear his voice live um, again. And so it was like beautiful to hear his message to the person that had called in. But at the same time, it was um, heartbreaking. And, you know, I'm listening to this podcast and it's getting to the very end. And I'm thinking, like, that was really nice. But like, that was definitely not a sign. There was nothing about that that was a sign. And then at the very end, with maybe 30 seconds to go, out of the blue, he says, if everyone who's listening could take a moment to send love to my daughter, Serena, because she's going, makes me cry, going through a hard time, I would really appreciate it. And then the podcast ended and I was laying there, like started laughing, crying, sneezing. I was like, wow, you just said if everybody listening could send love to me because I'm going through a hard time. I have no idea when he recorded that podcast or what hard time he was referring to. But the fact that in that moment, he said my name in a way that, I don't know, it just kind of confirmed to me that that was the sign that, um, that I needed. Wow. Uh, so Serena, I mean, that just is so moving. I mean, I was really, I've seen this clip before, but it's just so moving. I mean, it just, oh my God, you know, and again, where we don't dismiss these things. I mean, seriously, this, do we think this is some random thing that, that you got this message to click and, and that this is the first one that you're going to click on? And then, and then this is at the end of the podcast. I mean, it's, it's just unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah, you know, to be honest with you, it is unbelievable, but it also is not to me. I think because I was, I say this so many times, but I really think it matters so much. Um, I was raised to expect it. I was raised to believe that the soul continues on, that um, that when my parents, if they died before me, that they would still be with me, that they would give me signs. I was raised going to psychics and mediums and learning meditation at the age of five. And um, so even my sister Sage, who is going to be on here um, with you in two weeks, um, you know, she even has a story in there about how when she was a child, she was able to heal herself in a matter of days from a, a skin, a skin issue that she had been told previously was um, going to require a lot of medical intervention to get rid of. And when my parents sat her down and told her that, yes, these, she had this virus, these flat warts on her face. And when they told her, you know, yes, um, the doctor, the skin doctor told her that, you know, we could burn them off. We could freeze them off or you could take a medication that will make you really sensitive to the sun and could leave scarring. And, um, so those were kind of her three options. My parents then said, but there is a fourth option, Sage. And the fourth option is that you are capable of healing your body. 
you are capable of healing yourself. And, um, and that's absolutely something that you can do. And they didn't tell her how to do it. They didn't tell her when to do it or what to do. They just said that, just know that within you is the ability to heal, to heal anything. And when you're, you know, six, seven years old and your parents who are your authority at that time, when they tell you that this, that something is possible, you don't not believe it. There's no doubt because your parents, you know, when you're a little kid, your parents are like the word and the law and Sage then proceeded and I'll let her tell the story, but she proceeded to, um, to talk to her bumps and she called them her bumps and to talk to them. And, um, and she actually, uh, told her bumps that she loved them, that she loved them and that she was okay that they were there, but now that it, now it was time to go. And my dad, I remember when my dad found out that that's what Sage had been doing, um, you know, at night under the covers with a flashlight telling her bumps that she loved them, but it was time for them to go. My dad was moved to tears because he thought that if you don't like something, a lot of people would probably take the approach of like, I'm going to wage war against you. I'm going to threaten you. I'm going to tell you, I hate you. You're ruining my life. Go away. But as a little innocent little girl, she inherently knew that she needed to send it love that in order to heal, she needed to send it love. And she did. And her bumps went away and she's never had them again. And so I think that um, the reason I say that story is because these stories, these signs, these messages, these message in a bottles and these, uh, you know, psychics calling out of the blue when you're in labor, these are all really incredible. And I recognize that um, I recognize that it's unique to be raised by somebody who tells you and teaches you that, the soul continues and that you can continue to get messages from the afterlife. So I recognize that that is really unique, but I absolutely know without a doubt that that same ability is available for everybody. And I think the reason it happened for me just in such an, an abundant amount right after my dad passed away. And then my, when my stepson passed away and then my sister summer, I think that the reason I've been able to get signs and messages from them is because I just do not doubt it. And when I get a sign or a message, my first thought is, um, yes, thank you. I knew you were going to communicate with me. I'm so excited that I'm hearing from you. And and I just say, like, thank you. Keep it coming. I love when you give me signs. I love when I hear from you. I love when you let me know that you're with me. And uh, a lot of times I actually talk out loud in my car when I'm by myself to one of them, to my dad or my sister or my stepson. And I'm telling you when I do that. It's like that day I get something. I get something that's just so specific and crazy. Yeah, this is, and of course, this is what Karen, Nellie, and these other mediums all share is when we don't dismiss, but receive and really and gain something from it and thank uh, the other side, then, as you mentioned, they, it, we're, we're encouraging and it'll keep coming back, which, which is why the programs like this are so important because there are too many people in today's world that want to dismiss these things. Uh, and it's just w way too much science here now that says, don't dismiss these things. This is really special. You know, hold this, uh, uh, hug this, let this in. There's, and, and then let this continue. You know, something came to me too, Serena. Um, we've been doing, working together now for gosh, over a year, but just something, just as you were talking, brand new came to me. And what came to me was that, you know, I've been referring to the shift of the ages, like this grand convergence, right? That where we know that the way we're living on the earth has to change. We, we all know that, right? There's the, we, we can't keep going living the way we are. That's, this is the shift of the ages that we're now in the midst of. Uh, and there are many descriptions of what it looks like on the other side. Uh, the co other co-founder of Humanities Team, Neil Donald Walsh wrote, the Conversations with God books. It talks, these books talk at great length about this whole new future where this, what it calls new spirituality emerges where we know ourselves as one with God and where we're routinely doing the things that you're talking about where we're um, metaphysical. We're reaching into the future, feeling it, knowing its truth and bringing it in, just bringing it in like that, like that, like that. Uh, I bet, Serena, you and your sister are gonna be real leaders in this where you're manifesting Health and well-being, health and well-being, seeing into the future. 
for your family and your communities. You're, you're going to be out there, you know, showing people we can do this. And this, it, it's, look, look at all that's happened already, you know, and there's more coming, you know, and, and, and inviting people, hey, stand up, stand strong, stand straight. You know, we all have this within us, as you mentioned, um, this, this God force is within every single person. Um, so just, yeah, yeah, we'll and, see. and to be honest with you before, because, you know, like a year ago when we would talk about some of these things and you would say, what do you see is next for you? That would always be a painful question for me because I was so unclear and I was so unclear of what I saw as next for me, um, because I didn't really know what I wanted to do next or what I wanted to do uh, with the rest of my life. And I have to tell you that that really changed for me when I listened to a clip from Esther Hicks and she was talking about, and for some reason this just popped up, so I'm just going to share it. She was talking about how um, she had been working with a woman who was having trouble getting pregnant. And um, the woman was constantly full of anxiety because she wasn't pregnant. Each time she tried, she wasn't getting pregnant and she was really stressed about this infertility she was experiencing. And then after a few months of them working together, um, the woman was four months pregnant. And Esther said that this woman, she does not yet have the baby in her hands. She has not yet become a mother, meaning that the, you know she's given birth and she's holding the baby. But she is at peace because she has so much faith that this baby is now indeed coming. And um, and that anxiety is all gone because now she actually knows that the baby is coming. And Esther said, if only I could get everybody to understand that everything that you desire, it's like the universe is pregnant with all that you desire and that you need and that you want in this lifetime. And if you can let go and trust that it's coming at the right time. Even if it doesn't happen today, maybe the baby needs five more months to develop that, um, you know, it's on its way. Don't become obsessed with the how, the when, the where, the what. Just be at ease knowing that the universe is pregnant with all that you desire. And and she would, and basically Esther was saying that when that woman became pregnant, it was like, all of her anxiety disappeared. And she said, so whenever you are thinking about what you want to do next or what you want to do with your life or what you desire or what you want to create or what miracle you need or what you need to feel good in, in life, just go with ease and knowing that the universe is pregnant with all that is, is on its way for you and it's all good. And so now if you were to ask me what I'm going to do next or what I want to do next, I would say, I'm really, really at ease and excited because I have such a knowing that the universe is just going to let me know what I'm going to do next. That the universe already has it planned and figured out and it's going to tell me. And all I have to do is just relax into it. Yeah, beautiful. And of course, your book is called The Knowing. So that was a premonition. Your, your <laughs> yeah. book was Sage, The Knowing. You know, So I've thought about that more than once. Uh, I don't know whether that was a premonition or, or how that came to you, but it's so right on. Because this is what, as you mentioned, Esther Hicks, Abraham, it's teaching is you, you just, this desire is so strong, so firm, so clear that you know, you, you know that it's coming. Uh, and then, it, of course, we manifest uh, it. So let me share again, you mentioned your sister uh, is coming back in two weeks. So Sage, Sage uh, Dyer is going to be back. Uh, the Wednesday after next, and at 9 a.m. Pacific, and then at 12 noon Pacific, Karen Noe is going to be uh, coming on. So we're going to have both of them with us on Wednesday the 17th, 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 noon Pacific. So uh, be sure to join us then. And then next Wednesday, uh, we're, we're doing this broadcast of uh, messages from the afterlife. Boy, don't miss that. That's going to be amazing. Um, let me also share on Humanity Stream. That's our streaming platform. It's uh, amazing. There's nothing like it in the transformational education industry. And um, I checked this morning. So Serena has 15 video trainings on there now. Uh, Sage has 13 video trainings. Karen Noe has 76 video trainings on the Humanity Stream platform. So uh, we're a 501c3 nonprofit. So, you know, price down, 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 down. Incredibly economical for the annual and monthly subscription. We even have a one-for-one 
where we give it away, mostly outside of the United States where people are on the conscious journey and can't afford it. Uh, so humanitystream.net, you can uh, check out the streaming platform. It's, it's amazing. Education is the key to social change. And programs like this are so incredibly important where we're really lifting the veil. This is what Serena Sage and Karen do so beautifully. By the way, Karen will tell you more about this in two weeks, but she's training you in this masterclass for, so that you can reach through the veil yourself to loved ones, angels, guides. She'll train you to do that. Uh, so, uh, boy, those of you that are here in the green room, if you haven't been into those modules, get into them. Don't miss them. And uh, if you're not a part of Humanity Stream, just join us for the free program next week. Okay, let me throw a question at you here, Serena. We don't have much time left. Um, so this is from uh, Gur Guranam, and I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, Guranam's in South Florida, also in West Palm Beach, uh, and says, your program with Karen Noe was the reason I joined Humanities Team. And it has been way more than I expected, so thank you. My husband passed more than five years ago, and I longed for a transmission across the veil. We were both on a spiritual path for 40 plus years. So I'm almost, I almost expected it. I got some messages in clouds, but then it kind of stopped. Then I had a visitation a few months ago, which was wonderful. Not much since then. Any idea how much energy or focus it takes to uh, create this communication with the other side? I don't know how much energy or focus, and I'm sorry about um, your loss of your husband. And I also hope you are okay from the tornado that we had this weekend in Palm Beach, which was crazy. Um, what I can say is this, uh, eight months before my dad passed away, he sent all of my siblings and myself a copy of the talk that he had done with Esther Hicks, where he had a conversation with Abraham. And he said, if any of you want any Christmas money, from me this year, you need to watch this program and write back telling me what your favorite part of the program was. So I know that you really listened to it because he felt like it was some of the most important work he had done was that conversation he had with Esther Hicks. And I wrote back to him and I said, the single thing that stood out to me the most was that when Esther's husband, Jerry died and Esther is a medium, a channel, uh, not a medium, sorry, she's a channel. So she has really good access to spirit. Um, she could not find her husband. She could not feel him. And she felt like, what in the world is going on? I am a channel and I can't feel Jerry, my husband of something like 30 years. And it was only when she was able to get the message from her guides, which said, Esther, Jerry is up here. And when you think of him, you are thinking of him in sadness, fear, longing. The more you're not getting a message from him, the further down your energy is going. Jerry cannot reach you when you are here. You must come up to him. That is where he is. And that is in the place of joy and pure love. So when you want to hear from Jerry, think of him from the place of joy. Think of your favorite funny story with him and marinate in that. And it clicked for her in that moment. Then she was able to find him in that moment. She called it going to her high flying disc. And so my understanding from that DVD was that in order to communicate with our loved ones um, and, and get messages, not all the time. I mean, it's natural to be in grief. And I think that you can still get signs when you're in that place. But I, but I just know that when you are in that place of love, even if it kind of hurts, that love that you feel for them, that longing that you feel for them. It's the love that allows them to reach you. Yeah, boy, that is beautiful and incredibly helpful. And I, uh, Karen Noe also shares this, this whole, this in the afterlife, it's a very high vibration. It's a pure love environment. And so where we operate at this lower vibrational level, it's a miss, like you say. And so our job has to be, we have to get, ourselves into that higher vibrational state and then the communication happens effortlessly. So uh, what a perfect thing to share. Uh, so here's another comment. We're out of time. So it'll be the last thing I bring in. And it, it's just a comment, actually. It's Joni. And she says, how helpful and beautiful your words are. I'm dealing with the loss of a son 
I will continue to speak with him. I have multiple signs that he is near me always. What Serena says resonates with me so deeply. So, yeah, you, uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure Joni's speaking for a lot of people. Serena, thank you for uh, and, just sharing and so I'm, personally. And I'm sending so much love to you, Joni. The loss of a child is, I'm sending you so much love. Yeah, boy, no kidding. Oh, loss of a child. Huge. So, okay, Serena Dyer Pisoni, thank you for uh, being with me here during today's program. Uh, really fantastic. And uh, look forward to being back with you again soon. I uh, want to thank all of you in the green room. We've got a bunch of friends in the Humanity Stream Plus room. I can see you on camera, those of you that are on screen. So big shout out to you. Our Humanities team friends out on uh, social media. Uh, Wayne Dyer, family friends on social media. Hello to all of you. Thanks for being with us for the hour. And uh, be sure to come back next week when we broadcast this Messages from the Afterlife. I want to thank also uh, just my uh, partner and colleague right here in the studio, Jim Gray. We can pull the camera back and kind of see the little studio setting. That's me on the couch. That's Jim over there. Jim, thanks. Smooth show. Nothing went down. I'll tell you, it takes courage to do these programs live on social media. <laughs> so thank you, Jim. Also, Nanette Kennedy, uh, Garth Catterall, Dee Meyer, Andy Gooski, Karen Watson, and all the other, my partners and colleagues who make these programs possible. Thank you, guys. Okay, and everybody, have a, a great rest of the day. Look forward to being with you. Um, actually, I'm going to be, be back on uh, the air in, uh, starting at 12, 12 noon Pacific today. I've got another program with J.J. Hurtag and his wife. Uh, they're extraordinary. They're going to come in live from Sedona, Arizona. So uh, if you're around, join us for that. Okay, thanks, everybody. Lots of love, and uh, be back with you soon.